Read the question carefully with me. It tells you everything you need to know. For four boys and five girls, two children are chosen at random to represent the school. Draw a tree diagram to determine the probability of choosing at most one girl. Okay. So, you can see I've already constructed my beginning here, right? Now, despite the fact that there are nine people in this situation, you do not need to draw nine branches every time. There's only two possible, possible outcomes in each stage of choosing a student. There are either a girl or a boy. Okay. And once you choose a girl, there are still more girls and boys to choose, so I get all of these different outcomes down here. Okay. Now, the tricky part of a probability tree diagram is to make sure you get the probabilities on each of the branches correct. So, what's the probability of picking a girl the first time? Five on five. Out of the nine. And because <laughs> this is nice and neat, I've only got two each time, the other one's just the complement. So it's just four over nine. Okay, but then you keep on thinking as you go through. From the top, having selected a girl the first time, two things have changed. Number one, the number of girls has changed. So it's no longer five, it's four. And secondly, the total number of students you can choose from has also changed. So this is now eight, which means that this is the complement. So that's fine. In exactly the same way, I now think about the boys. The number of girls hasn't changed, but the number of boys has. Okay. So I've finished my tree diagram. You could add one more thing to this. Sometimes this is very useful, depending on what kind of question you've got. Um, remember I said before, if there's a small number of possible events, just list the things out. It won't take you long, and it will help you answer the question accurately. Right? So I'm just going to write letters that correspond to each of the events. So girl, 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 boy, and so on. Okay, now the question. What is the probability of choosing at most one girl? At most one girl. So how many different ways can I do this? At most one girl. Mm. So, so clearly one girl is okay, because at most one girl. So, so these each have one girl. Um, if I go this route, have I chosen at most one girl? Yes. The answer is I have, right? Because zero girls is still less than one girl, right? So this is an okay option. Now having ticked these all off, you can see I've got two options now, right? I can multiply through, get this one. Multiply through, get this one. Multiply through, get this one. And add them all up. Or maybe, and again, the same place has helped me see. If I just work out what this one is, then the probability I'm after, all of these guys, is one take away the probability of two girls. That's clearly a more efficient way to do this, yeah? Uh, you, you should get the same answer either way. So I'm gonna write this. I, I suppose I could have said the probability of at most one girl, like that. Is that at most one girl? Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm gonna do one take away, and you can see I'm gonna multiply along the branches to get the top one, right? So this is one take away. This times this. Um, four? Does four go into that? Four goes in, right? Is there a bigger number than four? It's four, right? So this is five over eighteen. So that's that. Are you happy with that? Yeah. In a similar way to what I pointed out before, right? As we went through calculus, you started to say, oh, I focus on the rules and you know, executing properly. But then as you apply it, you think less about the rules and more about, well, how am I going to use these? Which rule should I use? And it's exactly the same thing here. The maths is super easy. It's about how you employ that and what tools you use to get to that one. Okay? Right. Last question. Last question. And then I'll set you to work on uh, these exercises so that will get you more practice. Um, we've got these 12 friends who are having a merry time, okay? Now, I gave you a table at the beginning, which gave you some principles. Look at the question. What tool will you use to help you answer this? Okay, I'm going to use a Venn diagram because people are clearly able to do more of these um, things at the same time than just one. Okay, So, that'll be enough space. Here's my Venn diagram. It's um, also helpful, it's not always relevant, 
but it is also helpful to put a box around this because there might be people who aren't in either of these groups that I'm about to identify. What are the groups? The apple pie. Okay, lovely. And outside. Yep. So just by labeling these in the way that I've done, it kind of implies that the people outside them haven't eaten either of those, which is fine. Okay. So then you say, for the numbers that I've been given, where, how do I start off actually filling in numbers in here? Okay. Okay, so have a look, right? One had ne neither beef nor apple pie. One. Okay. So now I have a count in my head, right? There are how many people in total? Twelve. Twelve. So that means I've got eleven left to deal with. Eleven left to deal with. Okay. Now, tell me another number. Tell me another. Okay, okay. So eight people eight beef, right? Eight beef. So there are eight people in this circle. But how many did I have left in my count? I had 11. So if 8 are here, that means 3 have to be here. Do you see where I got that number from? That number is implied. It doesn't say in the question, 3 people only, sorry, 3 people ate only apple pie. But by crunching from this number, and what's happening in this circle, the 3 is where that, that's where that comes from. Okay. Now once I've got that, you see, yeah, well don't, don't guess. Think, think, have the count in your head. Okay, now that I know there are 3 here, Okay, so it says seven, eight apple pie. Well, I've already counted three of them, so that means there must be four who I haven't counted, which means that lastly, remember, before there are eight people in this whole circle? Done. Okay, so the hardest part of this was just constructing, knowing where the numbers are going, rather than doing it much harder. Okay. 